Well, we're supposed to be outside today, but the weather did not cooperate. It's been one of those years. We've been filming a lot in the rain, but too much rain today for the camera, for the photographer, and for the gardener. So I do have a great job for working inside today, and that's saving seeds. Uh, whenever we're saving seeds from any plant, we're trying to get that seed right before the plant discards it. In the, this case, we're doing tomatoes. Now with tomatoes or any other plant, you can't save from hybrid seeds. Hybrids are a cross, conventional plant breeding, and if we save those, they revert to one of the parents. So it will say on the plant tag if it's a hybrid or not. In this case, we've got a tomato. This is a, a heirloom black cherry tomato. Whoops. And uh, we wanted to get this tomato right where it was a little overripe, but not rotten yet. And so we've got our tomato right where we want it. You will be surprised when you save your own seeds at how great your germination rates are. And all we're going to do is we're going to cut these tomatoes open. And then we're going to squeeze them out. Most seeds, all you do would, you know, just take them out and dry them. But in the case of tomatoes, we need to do a fermentation process first. And that takes off the gelatinous coating in the seed, which stops it from sprouting inside the tomato. And it also helps uh, prevent some, uh, some diseases. So we just kind of squeeze that into there. And our seeds are going in. And this is just water. There we go. You'd be surprised how many seeds you get. And you can still eat this. <laughs> I love doing this every year. And I love giving, the, giving away the seeds to other gardeners. Okay, just a couple more. I bet you we've got a good 50 seeds in there, maybe more. And what we'll do is this will sit for about two days. Every day we'll give it a little stir and they will ferment. They'll put a little, uh, whoa, there's an acorn. <laughs> they will ferment. And then the next step is we pour them out into something to dry them. And I like to use a coffee filter uh, because the uh, seeds don't stick uh, too much to the coffee filter as they would. Like I get a lot of seeds back from people on paper towels and those kind of stick to the paper towel. Sometimes I'll just fold the whole paper towel up and put it in. And so we had two days in here. These have been sitting out for about a week. They're nice and dry. And then very important when saving seeds is to mark the variety because all the seeds look the same. This is black cherry. And we'll just pick up some seeds and put them in the envelope. This envelope will be stored in an airtight mason jar. All right, and there our seeds go in. That's all there is to it. And it doesn't have to be just tomatoes. It could be beans, it could be lettuce, it could be flowers, it could be just about anything that you could save your own seeds. And this is actually a different variety of tomato I tried for the first time this year called Atomic Grape, uh, which is really cool looking. All right, I'm going to retool. I'm gonna do one more job here at the table in the greenhouse while the rain comes down. Well, this next job is something I usually save for the winter, but on a good rainy day, why not? I've got this African violet. It's been sitting around for a couple years, and time to pot it up. Nothing hard about that. We're just moving up to a little bit bigger container. Whenever you do any container planting, always have this planting mix moist first. And so I've done that. I'm just going to stick this in. I never want to plant it too deep. There we go. This plant's going to get nice and big. And in this uh, process of moving the African violet, I've got lots of little leaflets left, and I'm going to make more African violets by taking just the leaf, and we're putting it in something called root tone, which basically kind of forces the stem to root, and we're just going to kind of put it down in here. And then each one of these will go into, again, a nice, uh, not soaking wet, but just moist, planting mix, and you can get that at any good nursery. You know, African violets have kind of fallen out of favor, but they're very easy to grow. It can take a lot of abuse. That's why they've been chosen as a house plant and beautiful flowers on the windowsill. Okay. Some of these will rot out, but others will 
root up. And basically what we're going to do next, we got to keep this really humid. I have to keep those kind of short. We got to keep this really humid. And so all we're going to do is cover this, put this in a plastic bag and seal it up. And in a couple of weeks, we'll open this back up and we'll just gently tug on any of these leaf leaflets. And if they resist, that means they've rooted up and we've got a whole other plant. That's all there is to it. A great, uh, great rainy day project. All right, let's finish up. Well, tune in next week. We're going to be putting all these plants in the ground. Hopefully, I'll be able to find where the rabbit is getting into the vegetable garden because that rabbit's going to love these beets. Lots of cool weather crops still to plant. Now, check me out online. Lots of great gardening information there. And that's where you can also join my Seed of the Month Club. Would love to have you as a member. Until next week, back inside because it's going to be raining all day. We'll see you then.